So now the details of the news and um, that very first story um, we told you about. The new crusading guide says it has tracked 3.5 million dollars paid to the government of Ghana from the 20, 24 million dollar sale of the GMPC's drill ship, the Discoverer 511, to a New York based bank. In a detailed report, the newspaper cites credible information courtesy of highly placed sources at the Ghana International Bank in the United Kingdom, which indicates the bank was on July 26, 2001, instructed by the Bank of Ghana to forward or also transfer a banker's draft of the value of $3.5 million to the government of Ghana uh, at its account at the Chase Manhattan Bank, the state of New York, the United States of America. Well, there are sources who prefer to speak to um, the news team on condition of strict confidentiality express surprise that the Bank of Ghana officials in Accra, Ghana, appeared before the sole commissioner on judgment debt to testify that the Bank of Ghana had no records of the whereabouts of the $3.5 million bankers draft, which stood in the name of the government of Ghana, apparently without reference to a previous correspondence, and that took place in July 2001 between the Bank of Ghana and the Ghana International Bank, formerly known as the Ghana Commercial Bank, based in London, the United Kingdom. Well, you can just read um, a full detail of the report in which sources uh, challenge Katie Hammond's claim that he arrived in Ghana with a check for $3.5 million payable to the government of Ghana on joyonline.com or myjoyonline.com. Now, the second story says government is optimistic of uh, meeting revenue targets with new tax hikes despite present difficulties with connections. And uh, in August this year, government uh, introduced three new taxes to address revenue shortfalls. Now, these include the National Civilization Levy and Customs and Excise Bill. However, the third bill, Special Import Bill, is yet to be laid before Parliament. Now, the state has so far been able to collect um, eight Ghana citizens, that's sorry, eight cents, um, that's 25 million from um, eight cents again, that's 371 million revenue target. And the Deputy Minister for Finance, Kweku um, Hagan, told the Joy Business Bank, mining firms, telcos, and other financial institutions. Um, would by the end of this year be giving away 5% of their profit stabilization living. Now, the Joy Business has gathered that government is now planning to collect taxes every month instead of previously annual cycle. Well, so we have to take you to the northern part of Ghana, where the Savannah Accelerator Development Authority, SADA, assigned an MOU with 62,110 Ghana cities with the Faculty of Renewable Natural Resources of the University for Development Studies for the latter to undertake specific audits. And uh, the Memorandum of Understanding, the UDS, will conduct a survey on the total number of trees planted by ACI construction through the SADA afforestation project, which began in June 2012. Rafik Salam's report from Wecho in the Wild West District. According to the Chief Executive Officer of the Savannah Accelerated Development Authority, Gilbert Seidu Idi, the tree planting project started 15 months ago to plant 5 million seedlings. To assess the progress of the project, SADA signed a Memorandum of Understanding with the Faculty of Renewable Natural Resources of the University for Development Studies to do a thorough audit of the project to know how many trees can survive, how many need tendering, and the number that can be handed over to the community. The field was planted in two stages. The first stage was planted sometime last year. And when they realized that the weather condition was too hard, too harsh for the seedlings, they had to stop planting. And then this year they came back and did another planting. So you can see a clear distinction between the trees that were planted last year and those that were planted this year. 
he told Dorimo, Wacho and Nipala in the Wild West District, where about 45 acres of casey seeds were planted. Alhaji Gilbert Idi expressed satisfaction with the progress on the farms, remarking that critics of Sada have been a little too impatient. If for any reason the report comes out and says that there is any shortfall on the number of trees that have been planted, we expect ACI to be able to make the difference at their own cost. Other stakeholders you know, who are involved in tree planting, who can all do a very thorough job in order to do an analysis of the situation and be able to advise us on the you know, success of the whole project. Then after that, if there is any criticism, I'll be very well, I mean, to be very welcome. Despite the criticism, the SADA CEO believes the project will achieve its goal. SADA is rolling out its strategies and SADA will certainly achieve the objectives for which SADA has been established. I'm very confident that it will. We have received a lot of criticism. For me, it has been a very healthy sign. It is just an indication that Ghanaians are willing and determined to see SADA succeed. No one wants to see SADA fail. And management takes that responsibility to make sure that we cannot disappoint Ghanaians. And for that matter, the way forward is success. Rafik Salam's report from Wicho in the Wild West District. Again, winner of CNN Multi Choice African Journalist Award on TV news category, Gifty Ando Apia, has said she has filled it with amazement with her name came up as a winner in that category. The newcaster and broadcaster of Joy News on Multi TV beat 26 other finalists from 11 countries to win this coveted award at the ceremony and gala evening in Cape Town, South Africa. In her story, Public Toilets in Perspective depicts the challenges people in some Ghanaian communities go through just to visit the toilet. Let's play back the story that Gifty won the award. I'm here at an over 30 year old public toilet which is most preferred because it is government owned and highly subsidized. The heat inside is intense, the smell absolutely engulfing and this is one of many public toilets here in Nima and in other parts of Accra. Earlier, the mayor of Accra has mentioned a phasing out of public toilet but that is yet to be realized. Interestingly though, none of the political parties in their manifestos have discussed vigorously the issue of public toilets. There are 12 rooms in this house located in Nima, a suburb of Accra. Over 60 people live here. The latest addition is three weeks old. The amount of food prepared here every day paints no faint picture of the end product, but there is no place of convenience when metabolism ends. With five grandchildren now, Antiasi has lived here for 20 years. <laughs> There used to be a toilet facility here, but for the past 15 years, we've had to make do with the public toilets because our number keeps increasing and that's put a lot of pressure on the facility. I cannot debunk the use of public toilets because when we had one here, it was always full and cesspit workers were very inconsistent. The house was always unkempt and smelly, so we all decided to patronize the public toilets. It's about 5.30 a.m. Whilst preparing her grandchildren for school, nature calls and she responds accordingly. The public toilet close to her house charges 30 pesos, but the government-owned public toilet is about 450 meters away from home. Here, she pays only 5 pesos for a piece of used newspaper and a place to ease herself. The relatively clean atmosphere on the outside of this toilet is no much of what is found inside where Antiesi and her counterparts contend with the immense heat concentrated from years and piles of feces. Splattered human excreta is a common feature in 10 open cubicles, the state of which easily facilitates spread of diseases. After more than 30 years, it is obvious the structure is very weak. Antiesi is lucky today. There was no queue here, but if there is, she appeals with her age to be given priority. Besides, she has difficulties marching to the toilet in response to nature's call. The distance between my house and the toilet is wide. We will accept and endorse any government which will collaborate with the landlords in this area to provide toilet facilities in our homes. It will be of an immense help to us. Landlords are yet to be bound by law to provide toilets, so for now, 
more public toilets are being built. Ibrahim is an attendant. I've been working here since 2003. 2003 that time, people have been coming here, yeah, but this time, people are reducing because people have been opening places and yeah, toilets for their area. That's why people are reduced from here, yeah, coming here. Yeah. Recently, one such toilet at Kaswa in the central region caved in, killing one and injuring four others. One of many incidents reflecting the current state of public toilets in Ghana. Patrons like Antiesi have no other alternative. Oh, and so that's a story that won Gifty Ando Apia that very coveted award at the CNN Multi Choice Awards over the weekend. And um, she was elated. And talking about how elated she was, she spoke to Nismat Akrofiabe. And um, this is how she reacted to the award. So uh, how are you feeling at this particular moment? I know we're talking to you a day after you won the award. I read you said your, your legs became cold when your name was mentioned. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, if you ask me how I'm feeling right now, I'm hungry because we just traveled from Cape Town and got to Joburg now after all the, uh, the celebration and all the party of the award. But if you're asking me about my feelings about the award, then it's certainly a great feeling. And I'm not just happy for myself as a person, I'm happy for the brand as well. Mm. Okay, so you spoke about uh, celebration and all that. What exactly did you guys do after uh, the award ceremony last night? I'm curious. Okay, why are you so interested in what we did anyway? Um, the, there was there was an after party right behind the stage where we took the awards. Hmm. So uh, right after the awards, we just walked uh, behind the stage and there was a party. So hmm. that's what happened. <laughs> Okay, so um, how does this award, uh, well, has it have, will it have any impact, let me put it that way, on um, your perspective as far as journalism is concerned and how you practice your trade as a journalist? Right. Uh, for me, this award is just a huge challenge. It's a huge challenge. Um, I'd say that within the context of the grant that we're working for, or the company that I'm working for, I know that they demand quite a lot, and the people of Ghana are quite demanding as well. So if you have um, this kind of award, which kind of set or set you up on a higher standard, mm -hmm. then it means that you have to live up to that standard, which can be quite um, challenging. But uh, I want to tell our viewers and the people of Ghana that I'm up to the challenge, and we're going to live up to that expectation. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, it just gives me hope. It just gives me a lot of hope about this particular um, topic that I, uh, we, I, I address or I try to address uh, in my story, which is public toilet. As much you know what has happened over the over the uh, years in Ghana as far as public toilets are concerned. And there were people in the audience who were actually saying, look, heard about the uh, public toilets and they were like, oh, it's not just in Ghana, we have some in our country. Oh, okay. And this was a gathering of people from all parts of Africa. Yeah. So it tells you that it's a problem that we're not just facing as a people of Ghana, mm. but it's a problem that we're facing as, a, uh, as Africa as a whole. So I'm excited that we brought this up on that pedestal, that everybody now is going to start discussing it. Just, but we just, uh, I'll just eat and think of how to please the demanding Ghanaian. <laughs> okay, thank you very much, Gifty and uh, Pia. So, Nismat Abe uh, talking to Gifty yesterday from South Africa. I'm so excited for Gifty. Congratulations again <laughs> to you, Gifty. And, uh, yeah, and uh, <laughs> Gifty will be flying back um, from South Africa to Ghana today. And I'm sure um, all the news crew and members of multi uh, media mm -hmm. will be there to congratulate her. Yes. Uh, more news coming up. We're doing the sports um, very soon. Okay. So. Mm -hmm. Do stay on. We all know the Black Stars. Um, Yay, they tomorrow! Are, yeah, they are previously uh, preparing just to play the Egyptian counterparts, and that very much is taking place in Kumasi. Ha Will have, you be you, going? have you prayed? Um, fasting tomorrow, I think <laughs> Well, so. I we didn't should, fast, but I prayed for them. Should, I'll be fast. going to watch the match tomorrow, <laughs> and I hope you will as well. I don't and you think also so. I'll be praying be. at home to support them. Okay, so the sports <laughs> is next. Sure. Hmm. Welcome back to you the like football? I wanted to ask you. Oh, do I do love football. Okay, so um, 
who is your most cherished player in the Ghana Premier League? Um, Lai, what's his name, that guy that great? Is it oh, Lai? He, oh, he doesn't play again. In a oh, no, he doesn't. I'm a cake, huh? Okay. I think I, I no, should, just I try again. Um, mm. uh, Roland, don't do this. Okay, <laughs> okay. But um, <laughs> we all know that the Ghana Premier League entered um, the sixth week, just the past weekend, and we had a host of matches. And we know Ghana also will be playing tomorrow against Egypt in Kumasi. That's a big match. Yeah, that's, that's a, a big, big match, match as well. Very but uh, there were some outstanding matches that were played. Seven league centres um, hosted fixtures, and fixtures between Kumasi, Asante Kotoko, and Sekendi Azakes um, have been postponed to Thursday, October 17. And uh, we all have the results on your screens now. Yes, so um, Heart of Folk 1 and uh, Berkum Chelsea 0, Edibia CFC 1 and uh, Bechem United 1, and what Amidas Professional? Professionals 3 and uh, Ken Faisal 1, Dwarf 0 and Liberty Professionals 1, Edwana Stars 1, Heart of Oak, Heart of Lions, sorry, nil. Wow Stars 3. Inter Allies 2 and Mediama FC 0 and Ashanti FC 0. Okay, so that, um, that draw there signifying what the state of the table is and following that win by a crown of folk, um, it takes them to the top of the Premier League jointly with Kumasi Asante Kotoko. And um, the goal difference, not much to say, but uh, the matches played is the difference. And Kotoko, again, as we've already informed you, will be playing on the 17th of October. And that's uh, this very Thursday. Yes, so I wow stars again pulled six points. And uh, Midyama FC, six. Berkum Chelsea, six. Faisal, six. Edubiasi uh, FC, six. Hazak has five. And Intar lies. Six. Wow. Mm. And we all know the race to Brazil 2014 is heating up. We had a host of matches over the weekend, not only in Europe, but especially in Africa. Mm -hmm. And we all know five fixtures um, are supposed to take place. Four have taken place, and the last one we're all waiting for is the one involving Ghana and Egypt, Egypt taking place in Kumasi. Yeah. Two teams would progress to the World Cup and Tunisia showed hunger up front as they tested out the Cameroon keeper Charles TJ. The keeper was once again at his best as he kept the indomitable lines in the game with a superb save. The Cameroon side got stronger as the half went on and Jean Macoun could have opened the scoring after good work from Eto set him up but he failed to find the target. The second half saw Tunisia once again get a golden chance to score, but substitute Ben Youssef wasted it when his header hit the post and went wide. It was proving to be an action-packed second half, but try as they may, both teams couldn't find the goal. Pierre Weber missed a sitter for Cameroon after losing his balance to sum up the match for his side. It proved to be a frustrating day at the office for both teams, but Cameroon will be the Ethiopia for the first leg of their final round World Cup qualifier on Sunday. On the back of their 2-0 success against the East Africans in the African Cup of Nations earlier this year, Nigeria had the first clear-cut chance. Namadi Odiamadi wasting the space he found in the Walia Antelope's box. Home fans were on their feet in the 24th minute when controversy struck. Good control, look at that! Oh, it's gone in! Has it gone in? Well, he's celebrating as if it has. Saladin Saeed, and the goal hasn't been given ball was deemed to have not crossed the line. Against the run of play, Ahmed Musa tested Jamal Tasu for the first time. Nigeria were finding it hard to cope with the pace and skill of their Ethiopian counterparts. Adane Grima jinxing his way around the Super Eagles box only to fire over the top. With half-time beckoning, Saladin Saeed forced a great save from France-based Vincent Enyema. 0-0 at the break. Controversy was again the watchword four minutes before the hour mark when Enyema appeared to collect a Bailu Asefa cross before it had crossed the line, but the linesman disagreed as the home side were handed a 1-0 lead. Victor Moses should have levelled for Stephen Keshi's men, but Tasu spread himself smartly to make the save. The visitors would find their equaliser soon after, though, Emmanuel Emenike sending a thunderbolt into the back of the net. With 14 minutes remaining, John Obi-Mikel slipped a pass to Musa, whose shot thundered against the post. 
Eight minutes before time, Ethiopia managed to get a ball into the Nigerian box. Godfrey Oboa-Borna with a timely intervention to prevent the shot. The officials would have the final influence in Addis Ababa after Ainalem Helu brought down Emenike on 90 minutes. Spartak Moscow striker slotted home to hand the Super Eagles a 2-1 win and the advantage going into the second leg qualifier in Calaba in November. First leg of playoffs in Africa's World Cup qualifiers kicked off on Saturday evening as the continent seeks to find the five best teams set to represent it at the tournament in Brazil next year. Burkina Faso and Algeria were the first to knock horns in Ogodogu and it would be the host who would walk away 3-2 victors with goals from Jonathan Pichiropa, Jacara Jacone and a late penalty from Aristide Banse. In Abidjan, Africa's top-ranked team Cote d'Ivoire proved to be too strong for Senegal as they handed them a 3-1 hiding. Goals from star striker Didier Drogba, Salomon Kalou and an own goal from Ludovic Sané gave the Elephants the win and bring them a step closer to booking a ticket to South America. And of course, there's a big match coming mm -hmm. tomorrow yeah. at the Babayara Sports Stadium in Kumasi. Mm, and um, Nanaku Shakunelu has promised me she will be there because I, I intend being there that as well. I promise to pray for the Black Stars. Okay, okay. Not, yes. not promise not to be there. there but, then but talking about uh, being there, one personality who will be at the forefront of affairs is the coach of the Egyptian national team, Bob Bradley. And the sports team caught up with him. And we had some interaction. Uh, you, is there any panic or something? Of course not. Uh, Egypt, uh, these players have experience playing against Ghana. So uh, anything that uh, took place uh, in South Africa with the U.S. doesn't apply now with this team. Bob, you've, uh, you've monitored the injury situation in the Black Stars come, but is it going to be a plus for you? Uh, they have depth, but still, when you lose important players, it uh, changes things. So uh, I'm sure they have a plan, but uh, you know, we certainly are just trying to concentrate on making sure we're ready to go. Okay. Okay. Thank you. And uh, Akusha, you see the face of that man. The, uh, he, he's so confident. He know, and I, no, no, no. He knows it. that he's losing. I'm telling you. He <laughs> knows that he's losing. Yeah, I'm so scared already. He knows that he, you're scared. I am. You shouldn't be. You shouldn't I be. Am, but <laughs> I'll pray. My <laughs> prayers work all the time. So, well, yeah. um, he had other qualifiers from around the world. I will bring you those details. Argentina hosted it from the race coming into the match. Despite failing to secure a place in the competition, Peru played positive football and in the 21st minute found the opening goal of the night through Claudio Pizarro, who lashed onto a through ball. Minutes later, Ezekiel Levitzi pulled the home side back after tapping in a loose ball from a corner. A cross from Rodrigo Palacio into the box found the Paris Saint-Germain attacker who gave the Argentines the lead in the 35th minute. Argentina put the final nail in the Peruvian coffin soon after the break through creator of the second goal Palacio to win the match 3-1 and finish as a top-ranked side from South America. The initiative in the game but striker Edison Cavani failed to get onto a beautiful ball in the box. Ecuador also went in search of the opener but also failed despite numerous attempts. The deadlock was finally broken though after Antonio Valencia set up Jefferson Montero who finished with ease. Lift off the Ecuador in Quito. It's Jefferson Montero with a trap in. Uruguay tried hard to find the equalizing goal with Cristiano Rodriguez forcing a fine save from the opposition keeper. The hosts were able to hold on to a 1-0 win and it clearly meant a lot to Valencia and the rest of the team. Well, so those are the highlights of some of those World Cup qualifying matches, especially um, from Southern America. Very interesting, mm -hmm, especially mm -hmm. um, those wins by those notable teams in that part of the world. And we have some comments. We have some yeah. comments. And this one from Seyram uh, Haji, who says that um, I know that Ghana is going to win, but uh, they need to concentrate a lot more. And hopefully that win will come their way. Menu Kells um, on um, our social network platform seem to be commenting about the win by Nigeria and uh, says that, um, again, the Super Eagles have shown that they are the champions of Africa. So what do you think will happen to Ghana if you qualify tomorrow? How will no, we react well, to well, it? Uh, tomorrow is the first leg, and so yeah, I believe so when we win the match, how, how are we going to it, it, it? It, it? It depends on how we win. We need to win convincingly, and then I, I believe that the match will be will be de decided by the so second leg. So, how many goals do we need? 
Well, it depends. It depends on how many goals we can score. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, this is AM. Should be right back this day.